staying with you, Prince Speaking to the Blind, celebrating 40 years of audio newspaper production. Welcome to this week's edition of the Glasgow Times podcast, recorded at the Bishop Briggs Media Centre by our amazing volunteers. You can get in touch with us via Facebook, Twitter or Instagram using at Q in Review. That is at symbol C-U-E-A-N-D-R-E-V-I-E-W. You can also contact us directly by emailing information at qinreview.com. That is I-N-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N at symbol C-U-E-A-N-D-R-E-V-I-E-W dot C-O-M. By calling 0141 772 3976. That's 0141 772 3976. This is from the Glasgow Times on Thursday the 16th of November 2023 from the Lifestyle section. Glasgow SEC boss recognised by prestigious music awards. This article is written by Marissa McQuirter. The director of live entertainment at the SEC was recognised at a prestigious ceremony honouring people in music. Debbie McWilliams became the first Scottish woman to be named in Music Week's Roll of Honour. At a ceremony in London, she collected her award at Music Week's Women in Music Awards last week. The awards, which have been running since 2014, shine a spotlight on some of the most inspirational and influential music executives in the business. Starting her career with the SEC in 1989, As assistant to the operations director, Debbie was appointed director of live entertainment at what is now Scotland's biggest and busiest live music venue. Her induction into the prestigious Music Week Roll of Honour also comes as the Ovo Hydro celebrates its 10th birthday. Under Debbie's direction, the Ovo Hydro has ranked among the world's best venues. The venue has hosted some of the world's most high-profile music events, including the MTV Europe Music Awards, a record-breaking 16-night run from comedian Kevin Bridges, and Elton John's last-ever UK Arena performance. Debbie said, It's an honour to be recognised alongside so many incredible women from our industry, many of whom I've had the pleasure of working with in my career. With Ovo Hydro celebrating its 10th birthday, joining the Women in Music Roll of Honour has made this year extra special. I'd like to say a special thanks to my team. They really are the best in the business and their support of me is unstinting. I'm so lucky to work with such a committed, skilled and all-round great bunch of people every day. Debbie joined some of music's most influential women in the Roll of Honour including broadcaster Mary Ann Hobbs, Kanya King, founder of the Mobo Awards, and Emma Banks, music agent. That article was written by Marissa McWhirter. This is from the Glasgow Times, on Thursday the 16th of November 2023, from the Lifestyle section. Greg's to host Christmas party in Glasgow with 80s music star. This article is written by Marissa McWhirter. Greggs has revealed plans to host its first ever Christmas party with Martin Kemp. The popular bakery is putting on a series of throwback themed events to kick off the holiday season. The three part party series Greggs Presents The Festive Rewind will kick off in Glasgow on November 30th transforming the engine works into the ultimate 80s-themed Christmas party. Bake to the 80s will combine statement hairstyles and leg warmers with karaoke classics as Spando Ballet star Kemp takes to the decks. Hansnet's Gareth Howells will be alongside Kemp, powering the event with a mix of Christmas hits and nostalgic anthems. Partygoers will be treated to complimentary cocktails and pizza slices from Greg's Pizza Van. Revellers can also fuel their dance moves at the festive bake bar. The two and a half hour party 
begins at 4.30pm at the North Glasgow venue. A £10 booking fee per person will apply to each reservation made and will be refunded upon attendance. A link to tickets for Greg's Presents The Festive Rewind will go live on Greg's social channels from 10am on Friday the 17th of November. Two other cities, Birmingham and London, will also be getting retro Greg's Themes parties. That article was written by Marissa McWhirter. This is from the Glasgow Times on Thursday the 16th of November 2023 from the Opinion section. We must not lose empathy and continue calls for ceasefire. This article is written by Susan Aitkin. Just three weeks ago I led an almost unanimous call by Glasgow councillors for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. We expressed our unequivocal sympathy and solidarity with Glasgow's Jewish community, who suffered terrible loss and trauma in the horrifying terrorist attacks by Hamas, but also expressed our outrage at the escalating humanitarian crisis caused by the Israeli government's collective punishment of the Palestinian people in Gaza. Since then, that humanitarian crisis has turned into a daily slaughter. More than 11,000 Palestinians have been killed. Close to 5,000 of them are children. Hospitals are under siege and babies in incubators have died for want of electricity. It is impossible not to be haunted by the images on our TV screens of Palestinian families mourning over the tiny broken bodies of their lost children. Tens of thousands of people across these islands, including here in Glasgow, have taken to the streets to express their revulsion and anger. They have every right to do so. Indeed, that right to public protest is a necessity and must be protected from the increasingly authoritarian policies of the UK government. But as we express our anger, we must also remain vigilant and steadfast in opposing hate crime and abuse of any group in society. Although they are a tiny minority of those marching, it has been disturbing to see some banners carrying anti-Semitic slogans. No matter how shocking the behaviour of the Israeli government, there is no justification for taking it out on ordinary Jewish people, especially those in our own communities, who are still counting their own losses and who are no more responsible for the actions of Benjamin Netanyahu than the ordinary people of Gaza are for the Hamas terrorism. And it was truly disgusting to see the racist English Defence League exploiting the conflict to parade their hatred of Muslims at the Cenotaph on Saturday, egged on by the now former Home Secretary. They were the ones desecrating Armistice Day, not the people marching for peace. There are already too many victims in this conflict. There must be zero tolerance of those attempting to use it as a justification for either anti-Semitic or Islamophobic hate crimes. I have been very proud of the leadership shown by our First Minister, Humza Yousaf, who has shown personal strength and political courage since the outset of this conflict, in stark contrast to the utter moral failure of both Rishi Sunak and Sir Keir Starmer. But it is Humza's empathy that has been most important, openly sharing the sorrow and grief of Scotland's Jewish community and acknowledging the great wrong that had been done to them, even as he and his wife Nadia El Nakla were living in terror for their own family in Gaza. That empathy is the quality we need most right now and it must be the driving force behind our demands for a ceasefire in Gaza and an end to this conflict. That article was written by Susan Aitkin. Glasgow Times News on Monday the 20th of November. Council bosses urged to make money from the city chambers. An article written by Sarah Hilly. Council bosses should consider making money from the historic rooms in their city centre headquarters when they're not in use, according to a councillor. 
The George Square 1888 landmark is lavishly decorated inside, boasting magnificent architectural features. There could be the potential to rent out the grand spaces, among other money-making ideas. Tours are offered for free. The council faces a £120 million shortfall over the next three years, with service culls, charge rises and the sale of property among the options to balance the books. Labour councillor Hanif Raja said, This chamber is sitting in darkness using electricity when we're on holiday. Why don't we use this building for other purposes to bring income in? He called for a strategy to consider the issue of a property not being used properly to bring in funds. Council Finance Director Martin Booth said, Lots of council buildings do get used for wider purposes. We try to rent them out for events and what not. I think you're specifically referring to the chambers. That would be a decision for politicians to make if you wanted that to be used more commercially than it is at the moment. Speaking at a city administration committee, Councillor Raja said council properties were sitting there being wasted and cost money for the council. He said expensive properties are also being rented instead of being sold. Mr Booth said a property strategy report is considering council property and is also looking at Glasgow Life buildings. He said staff are looking at properties that are leased rather than owned and are considering the most efficient way of managing estates. He said they're considering getting out of leases or selling buildings. Following questions from Labour councillor Elaine McDougall, Mr Booth said the £120 million figure did not include an estimated £54 million to meet changes to the housing needs of asylum seekers in the city. Ms McDougall voiced concern about the lack of detail in the paper. Mr Booth said the problem of funding housing for asylum seekers is of such a severe scale that it's not manageable within our current budget process. He said it can't be managed within normal council resources. The Scottish Greens and Labour councillors put through amendments which were accepted to the council paper on the budget strategy for 2024-2025 to 2026-2027, which was presented at the meeting. Scottish Greens councillor John Molyneux said his accepted amendment seeks clarity on the council tax freeze funding from the government and makes the case for more national cash for sporting and cultural assets. It also seeks to make sure councillors have information on applying revenue-raising powers. Labour councillor Jill Brown's amendment, calling for savings to be evenly distributed over the three years, was accepted by Mr Booth. The council is set to set a budget on February the 15th next year. An article written by Sarah Hilly. Glasgow Times News on Monday the 20th of November. Gas and electric bills set to rise again in January. An article written by Stuart Patterson. Gas and electric bills are expected to rise again in the new year, it has been warned. An increase to the energy price cap is said to be announced next week. Energy market analysts Cornwall Insight have forecast that a typical annual household bill will go from £1,834 to £1,931 in the new year before falling slightly in April. Advice providers looking to help people manage their finances in the light of another rise are urging people to get in touch. Advice Direct Scotland said it's already seeing more people coming forward. Hazel Knowles, energy lead for Advice Direct Scotland, said We've already witnessed high demand from households across Scotland seeking assistance with their energy bills. Costs are significantly higher than they were before the energy crisis began and this latest warning ahead of next week's announcement means that many Scots face a challenging winter ahead. We urge people across Scotland not to struggle alone. Our expert advisers can provide free advice on the support available. Meanwhile, Citizens Advice Scotland said the rising cost of household energy is the biggest financial worry for people across the country. It also found that more than 1.4 million people in Scotland are worried about being able to adequately heat their home this winter. 
Citizens Advice Scotland has launched its Worried This Winter campaign, encouraging people to seek help. Derek Mitchell, Citizens Advice Scotland Chief Executive, said... As the weather turns cold, it's perfectly understandable that people are worried about their energy bills and keeping their homes warm. We face the worst cost of living crisis in living memory and people have had their financial resilience worn down. Our new campaign says to people it's OK to be worried this winter because the Citizens Advice Bureau network is here to help you regardless of your background or circumstances. Our advice is free, impartial and confidential. Advice Direct Scotland advisers are on free phone 0808 196 8660. That's 0808 196 8660. Monday to Friday, 9am to 5pm. And further details can be found at www.energyadvice.scot. An article written by Stuart Patterson. Glasgow Times News on Monday the 20th of November. Glasgow pensioner demands clean-up of danger lifeline path. An exclusive front-page article written by Amanda Keenan. A blind woman has demanded council bosses act to clear a hazardous rubbish-ridden path near her home before someone is seriously injured. Margaret Cowie, who's 71, says she's become a prisoner in her own property after a key route to the nearest bus stop became impassable due to its cracked, rutted and unkempt surface and surroundings. The path has also been turned into a dumping ground with burnt-out tyres, broken furniture, glass and abandoned shopping trolleys scattered along its length. The pensioner says the lane from her home in Scalpe Street to Lidsdale Road in Milton has become unusable to the visually impaired and disabled due to a lack of maintenance by the council. She told the Glasgow Times, A lot of people rely on that walkway to get to the bus stop. It's a lifeline for many of the elderly around here and right now we're all scared to use it because of the state it's in. The surface is ridden with trip hazards. There's moss everywhere and there are branches poking out into your path that someone like me with sight problems just can't see. It could easily cause someone to take a bad tumble. There is another lane a bit further along Scalpy Street, but that's just as bad, to be honest. Using that as an alternative route to the bus stop in Lidsdale Road just isn't an option. Margaret has challenged the council to step up and get the route in order before winter bites. She says she no longer has the confidence to go out on her own and relies on the help of a friend and site guide, Brian West, if she needs to travel. Brian added, This lane is difficult enough for me to navigate. It's a wonder nobody's been injured and hopefully this story will at least make those using it as a dumping ground think twice. It's a disgrace it's been allowed to fall into this state. Margaret added, It's bad enough in the summer, but towards the end and turn of the year it's downright dangerous. It's not been properly maintained and I've complained about it without anything being done. The angry pensioner has now contacted Councillor Robert Mooney in a bid to have the matter resolved. The councillor is a long-standing campaigner for the blind, being partially sighted himself. He says that more needs to be done to make the city more accessible and safer for the visually impaired. He said, What Margaret is facing, sadly, isn't a one-off. There are people like her all across Glasgow, finding it increasingly difficult to navigate their way around. Cycle lanes are popping up everywhere, floating bus stops, tree planting. All of these things make it very difficult for a blind person to get to know a route and feel safe travelling it. Margaret has totally lost her confidence to go out without a sighted guide, and she is not alone. Margaret added, Glasgow City Centre is bad enough, going into town now with all the cycle lanes and trees in the middle of main shopping thoroughfares, but when you can't get around safely in your own neighbourhood, then that's not on. After the Glasgow Times contacted the council for a resolution, two workmen turned up on Friday and began clearing the mess. They left, however, before the clean-up was completed. A spokesperson for Glasgow City Council says that the local authority will look at what repairs and further action is required. 
They added, We're sorry to hear of the residents' difficulties on this path. We've recently undertaken work on this path to cut back vegetation to make it easier to pass along. The path has also been assessed by our roads team and repairs have been earmarked for this location. We'll continue to monitor this area and undertake any maintenance as necessary. An exclusive front page article written by Amanda Keenan. Glasgow Times News on Monday the 20th of November. Call for action after a spike in urgent cancer referrals. An article written by Stuart Patterson. Urgent referrals for cancer have spiked in Glasgow in the last two years. The number of people sent by GPs to hospital marked urgent suspicion of cancer increased from 28,040 in 2020-2021 to 43,325 in 2022-2023. Scottish Labour obtained the figures from health boards across the country. Across 12 of the 14 health boards, it found urgent cancer referrals rose from 96,349 in 2018-2019 to 171,999 in 2022-2023, a rise of 78%. For Greater Glasgow, over the four years, the increase was 72%, up from 25,169 in 2018-2019. Labour said it was evidence of a cancer care crisis and demanded that the Scottish Government takes urgent action. Jackie Bailey, Scottish Labour health spokesperson, said, Cancer remains Scotland's biggest killer, and yet this SNP government has time and time again failed to take the decisive action needed to save lives. Every loved one lost to cancer is a tragedy. It's absolutely crucial that everybody afflicted by cancer has early access to high-quality treatment and care. The biggest annual increase in the Glasgow area was from 2020-2021 to 2021-2022, when cases shot up by 11,503 urgent referrals, a rise of 41% in a year. Ms Bailey added, This surge in suspected cancer referrals is not just down to COVID. It's a result of the repeated failures by SNP health ministers to get a grip on this deadly disease. For months, Scottish Labour has been calling for a proper diagnostic catch-up plan and action to address the issues facing cancer care and workforce pressures, but these calls have fallen on deaf ears. The time for warm words is over. Michael Matheson must take immediate action, invest in primary care and come up with a proper workforce plan to reverse this crisis before any more lives are lost. The government said the Covid pandemic affected services and it had a long-term plan in place to improve treatment. A Scottish government spokesperson said, Cancer remains a national priority for the NHS and the Scottish government, which is why we have published a new 10-year strategy, improving all areas of cancer care from prevention and diagnosis through to treatment and post-treatment care. This will improve cancer survival and provide equitable access to treatment. The pandemic had a significant impact on all aspects of health and social care, and cancer services were no exception. Through continued investment in the Detect Cancer Earlier programme and by activating additional rapid cancer diagnostic services across Scotland, we aim to further reduce late-stage diagnosis. An article written by Stuart Patterson. Glasgow Times News on Monday the 20th of November. £36 million fund to roll out 5G network. An article written by Catherine Hunter. Glasgow City Region is one of 10 successful areas which is set to benefit from a share of £36 million to roll out the 5G network. The UK Government Department for Science, Innovation and Technology confirmed the decision last week, which is part of the government's ambition to drive telecoms innovation. The city region is made up of eight partner councils, including Glasgow City, Western Bartonshire, Eastern Bartonshire, East Renfrewshire, Inverclyde, North Lanarkshire, Renfrewshire and South Lanarkshire, and aims to deliver a sustainable economy.
Projects across the region will deliver wide-ranging economic and community benefits by demonstrating the demand for and the benefits of 5G and advanced wireless technologies across the social housing and the health and social care sectors. Speaking on behalf of the eight Glasgow City Region Councils, Susan Aitken, Chair of the Glasgow City Region Cabinet and Glasgow City Council leader, said... Our selection as a 5G region is testament to the huge strides the Glasgow City region has taken in the recent past. In the past 18 months, recognition of metropolitan Glasgow as a place where world-leading innovation is done has helped secure almost a quarter of a billion pounds in government investment. Our strengths and assets are generating the employment, training and productivity outcomes our citizens need and our economy demands – and our selection as a 5G innovation region will help take that further. 5G is already transforming the services we provide to communities, and this funding will support our use of technology to making people safer in their homes and providing them with more efficient, healthy and inclusive outcomes. An article written by Catherine Hunter. Glasgow Times News on Monday the 20th of November. More parking wardens amid huge crackdown on drivers. An article written by Sarah Hilly. More parking wardens are being hired by Glasgow City Council to crack down on drivers breaking vehicle restrictions. The local authority is hiring an additional 30 parking attendants temporarily to cover parking controlled areas. Two senior parking attendants are being taken on to support the larger workforce and 84 handheld units are being replaced to improve efficiency. 13 extra parking attendants have been employed over the last three months. A council paper said the number of penalty charge notices has surged by nearly 40% compared to the previous year. Among issues being cracked down on, the Council is looking to improve enforcement of inconsiderate parking at bus stops and in bus lanes by identifying problem areas with public transport firms. The Council paper said, Enforcement of parking, bus lanes and the low emission zone plays a pivotal role in ensuring the functionality of the city and aligns with the objectives outlined in our transport strategy framework. The Council is making significant investments in this area to enhance enforcement services. The measures are part of a range of work being undertaken by the Council's parking services team. Other system changes would see cars with three or more unpaid penalty charge notices removed and taken to the vehicle pound. Another development will mean residents pay different amounts for parking permits depending on the level of emissions from their cars. Consultation is to take place on the move, which would see people with the lowest polluting vehicles paying less. Plans also include the establishment of event day parking zones around Celtic Park and Ibrox to protect residential areas and improve enforcement during events. The ongoing work and operations involving parking will be presented to councillors sitting on the Environment and Livable Neighbourhoods City Policy Committee this week. An article written by Sarah Hilly. Glasgow Times News on Monday the 20th of November. No action to be taken against striking pupils. An article written by Nicole Mitchell. No action will be taken against pupils who took part in a rally calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. We previously reported that hundreds of people joined a school strike for Palestine rally in the city centre on Friday. Rallies were held in Glasgow, London and Bristol as part of a number of school walkouts and were organised by the campaign group Stop the War Coalition. School pupils were joined outside the Royal Concert Hall on Buchanan Street by parents, workers, trade unionists and higher and further education students. Ahead of the protest, Councillor Blair Anderson, Green spokesperson for Education and Young People, called on Glasgow City Council to ensure no punitive action would be taken against those who took part, saying young people deserve to have their voices heard. 
He highlighted that in 2019, pupils who took part in school strikes for climate had absences recorded as authorised if they had permission from a parent or carer to take part. In a letter addressed to Douglas Hutchison, Executive Director of Education Services, Councillor Anderson wrote, As you may be aware, a school strike for Palestine has been organised for Friday, November 17th, to give Glasgow's children, young people and students the opportunity to add their voices to demands for a ceasefire. As we have seen with the Fridays for Future movement and school strikes for climate, school strikes are one of the most effective ways for young people to make their voices heard and to demonstrate their abilities as effective contributors and responsible citizens. We understand in 2019, following calls from my colleagues in the Scottish Greens, Glasgow City Council confirmed that there would be no punitive action taken against young people who took part in school strikes for climate, and that where there was parental or care permission, any absence would be recorded as authorised. We would be grateful to you if you could confirm that that precedent will be maintained and that Glasgow City Council will not take any punitive action against young people taking part in a school strike for Palestine, with permitted absences being recorded as authorised. Councillor Anderson later tweeted that there would be no punitive action against those who took part in the protest. He wrote, There will be no punitive action for those taking part in today's school strike for Palestine. Grateful to Glasgow's Executive Director of Education for taking this approach. Solidarity with all the young people out there today, demanding a ceasefire now. An article written by Nicole Mitchell. Glasgow Times News. On Monday, the 20th of November. Parents being warned about Black Friday scams. An article written by Katie Collier. With Black Friday approaching, parents are being warned to watch out for fake deals advertised online. Research for the Take 5 to Stop Fraud campaign, run by banking and finance industry body UK Finance, indicates that more than a quarter of parents have been tricked by purchase scams. A purchase scam is when someone pays for goods or services and they never turn up. Often, criminals advertise tech devices like phones or computers at low prices to attract buyers. They persuade them to make bank transfers and then disappear when the payment has been made. This can either be done through fake websites or fake ads on social media. It can also happen through auction websites. Of the parents surveyed, only a quarter said they always research sellers before they buy. Purchase scams are the most common kind of authorised fraud, accounting for two-thirds of cases, according to UK Finance's recent half-year fraud report. The volume of purchase scam cases has grown by 43%, from 53,907 in the first half of 2022 to 76,946 in the first half of 2023. The amount stolen from victims in this period also rose by 31% to £40.9 million. The report also indicated that 77% of authorised push payment scams start on online platforms. Ben Donaldson, Managing Director of Economic Crime at UK Finance, said More and more criminals are using fake ads and websites to target their victims. And particularly at this time of year, too many parents who are trying to bring joy to their children are falling victim to these ruthless crimes. The consequences go beyond financial, because the deception involved can cause real emotional and psychological damage. So this Black Friday, when you're searching for gifts for your children and loved ones, take extra care online. Check sellers thoroughly before buying and make sure you follow the Take 5 to Stop Fraud advice. Stop. Challenge. Protect. For the research, one poll surveyed 2,000 parents of 5 to 30-year-olds across the UK in October. To help people stay safe, the Take 5 to Stop Fraud campaign has issued the following advice. 1. Stop. Take a moment before parting with your money or information. 2. Challenge. Could it be a fake? It's okay to reject, refuse or ignore any requests. 
3. Protect. Contact your bank immediately if you think you've been scammed and report it to Action Fraud. Black Friday will take place on Friday, November the 24th this year. An article written by Katie Collier. Glasgow Times News on Monday the 20th of November. Roads budget millions short of what's needed. An article written by Drew Sanderlands. Investment in Glasgow's roads falls short of the amount needed to keep them in their current condition by more than £11 million. Almost £31 million per year would be required to maintain a steady state, a road infrastructure condition report has revealed, but currently £19.7 million is spent. Public satisfaction with roads maintenance has dropped to its lowest level since 2011, while, according to the latest data, pothole reports were more than 20,000. Without extra funding for new streetlights, the risk of injury to the public from collapse or exposure to electrical wiring is increased. A council spokesperson said that staff maximise resources to maintain the road network to the highest possible standard, prioritising the most serious issues. They added the report is intended to inform councillors before the council's budget meeting in February. The annual report found 71.7% of carriageways are in an acceptable condition. Around 41% of the city's 74,000 street lighting columns are beyond their expected service life. Approximately 54% of Glasgow's 900 traffic signals need to be replaced, and that road infrastructure covers carriageways, footpaths, cycle lanes, traffic signals, lighting, street furniture, the Clyde Tunnel and structures such as bridges. Officials recommend an annual investment of £13.95 million in carriageways over five years, up from £10.9 million. Spending £12.85 million would maintain a steady state. Following the recommendation would lead to the Glasgow Road Network being in the best condition in over a decade, they said. Currently, shorter-term preventative treatments are taken to extend the life of the surface but do not address any underlying structural issues. Officials have said the deteriorating condition of street lighting poses an increasing risk to the public. Extra inspections are being carried out to remove columns in the poorest condition. They added investment is still below the £5.95 million steady state figure required to maintain the infrastructure in its current condition. Under the current investment level, columns will continue to deteriorate and the risk of injury by column collapse or exposure to electrical wiring will increase. More than £6.5 million is needed per year over 15 years to replace up to 30,800 at-risk columns and cabling. The annual report also recommends an investment of £27.5 million over five years to replace all ageing traffic signals and provide modern low-energy LED lights along with fully compliant tactile paving and indicators. Data revealed more than 81% of footways are in good or fair condition, while 2.9% show major or structural deterioration, and 15.9% have minor deterioration such as cracking. It showed 94% of the primary cycle network is in good or fair condition. The condition of footways is the most significant factor in the number of public injury claims, and 2022-2023 saw the first increase in the number of footway claims settled since 2017, the report added. An annual investment of £3.8 million per annum for five years would remove all footways exhibiting major defects and structural deterioration. The Clyde Tunnel requires significant investment to address necessary repairs to operational infrastructure and structural issues. The top priorities are a number of improvements to the cycle and pedestrian tunnels to provide a safe active travel route, the repair of the ventilation system and a power system upgrade, officials said. The top maintenance priority to ensure structures remain safe is the strengthening of the Shield Hall overpass, 
with £4.5 million of funding secured for the financial year 2024-2025. An article written by Drew Sanderlands. This is from the Glasgow Times on Tuesday the 21st of November 2023 from the Opinion section. Glasgow can lead public transport revolution. This article is written by Patrick Harvey. Anyone who lives, works or spends time in Glasgow will find something to adore from its renowned culture and sporting events to its vast urban green space or the huge array of locally owned food and drink businesses. At its best, Glasgow is a melting pot of activity and excitement. But what we hear time and again, both from residents and visitors, is that our public transport system is not up to scratch. This goes all the way back to the dismantling of the tram network and Thatcher's deregulation of the bus market, leaving Glasgow's public transport network confusing to navigate, expensive disconnected and often unreliable. Given a large proportion of people living in our city do not own a car, the importance of public transport shouldn't be underestimated. Good transport is essential to connect people with opportunities, jobs and services, friends, family and basic essentials. Yet, all too often, people in Glasgow simply can't rely on it, making their lives harder and making inequality deeper. It is a gendered issue too, since women often follow more complicated routes with multiple stops and connections due to persisting gender roles that place responsibilities for care and unpaid tasks on them. I'm really encouraged to see a shift in the direction of travel. In October, Thanks to green input to the budget last year, peak rail fares were scrapped across Scotland for a trial period of six months, providing huge financial relief to people commuting to and from Glasgow at peak hours. Every pound saved on this commute will instead go towards other expenses this winter, and it also makes it easier for people to choose the train over the car, helping us to reach our crucial climate targets. I am also delighted to see the call for the Cathcart Circle Line to be reinstated to pre-pandemic levels has been answered. Last year I wrote to ScotRail and the Transport Minister and attended ScotRail regional briefings along with Green councillors calling for this exact U-turn. From December the 10th, the Glasgow South Electrics, which includes the Cathcart Circle, We'll see a fully electric hourly service back up and running, Monday through Saturday, doubling the number of trains via Langside, Pollock Shores East, Shorelands, Maxwell Park and Pollock Shields West. This is great progress and signals a step change in transport planning. It's a reminder that the decisions made by companies and governments play a huge role in the daily choices we all make about how we get about. Of course, we know this isn't perfect, and we want to see these train services extended to Sundays, increased in the evening, and expanded to half-hourly, as well as local train stations being more accessible. I'm determined that Greens in Glasgow and in Parliament will continue to deliver the change that's needed. It's clear that Glasgow can do better. Campaign groups like Get Glasgow Moving have been putting the pressure on Glasgow City Council, the Scottish Government and Strathclyde Partnership for Transport, SPT, for years and their efforts do not go unnoticed. The recent publication of the Miles Better Report, which I'm delighted Scottish Government was able to fund, presents the vision and the solutions in building a strong case for Glasgow's public transport future. This shared vision can help us to build a fully integrated, green, publicly owned transport network that is accessible, efficient, affordable and safe. Glasgow can become the modern and inclusive European city that we aspire to be and can once again be a leader in providing world-class public transport. 
That article was written by Patrick Harvey. This is from the Glasgow Times on Tuesday the 21st of November 2023 from the Lifestyle section. How to keep your towels fresh and last longer with a 29p hack. This article is written by Molly Court. Spending money on the fluffiest towels you can find to replicate the hotel towels you can't stop thinking about can feel like a silly purchase sometimes. Especially as the cost of living continues to rise and energy and food bills are yet to see a substantial fall. Plus, the chances of your new towels staying bright and soft are rather low. That was until experts at flower sack towels discovered a cheap household hack using a cupboard staple most people are bound to have in their kitchen. How you can reduce your energy bills. The towel professionals recommend that washing towels with vinegar can help to freshen them up, remove any build-up of detergent or fabric softener residue and restore their absorbency. Here is their step-by-step guide to achieving the towels of your dreams. You will need white distilled vinegar, a washing machine, mild laundry detergent and baking soda, although that is optional. At Tesco, the supermarket's own branded distilled vinegar, 568 millilitres, is currently priced at 29 pence. This is also an Aldi price match. How to restore your towels and keep them fresh. Preparation. Place your towels in the washing machine. Load size. Make sure not to overload the washing machine. The towels need room to agitate and rinse properly. Washing cycle. Set the washing machine to run a hot water cycle. Add your usual amount of mild laundry detergent. Add a half to one cup of white distilled vinegar directly to the washing machine drum along with the detergent. This vinegar will help break down detergent and fabric softener build up on the towels, which can reduce their absorbency. Additional rinse. After the washing cycle completes, run an additional rinse cycle with just water. This helps ensure that all the detergent and vinegar residues are thoroughly rinsed out. Dry the towels. Dry the towels in the dryer on a medium to high heat setting. Make sure they are fully dry before using them. If you don't have a dryer, you can hang them outside in the sun or indoors to air dry. Check absorbency. After washing and drying the towels, check their absorbency. They should feel softer and more absorbent. If you're not satisfied with the results, you can repeat the process or try a few alternative methods. Alternative methods are Some people find success in using baking soda in addition to vinegar. If you want to try this, add half a cup of baking soda along with your detergent during the initial wash cycle. Another method is using a cup of ammonia along with the detergent. Be cautious when using ammonia as it can be harsh on some fabrics and should be used sparingly. How to dry clothes indoors during the winter. Maintenance. To maintain the absorbency of your towels, avoid using too much detergent and fabric softener as these can build up on the towels over time. Use vinegar or baking soda periodically to help prevent this build up. To prolong this lifespan and maintain the absorbency of your towels, the experts at Flower Sack Towels also recommend washing your towels regularly with a mild detergent and avoid using fabric softeners as this can leave a residue that reduces absorbency. In addition to this, avoid overloading your washing machine to allow for proper cleaning and dry your towels thoroughly as damp towels can become breeding grounds for bacteria and odours. How often should you replace towels? They added, Finally, you should consider replacing your towels every few years to ensure you have the best drying experience. 
remember that the type and quality of towels you purchase can also impact their absorbency. Towels made from high quality materials like Egyptian or Pima cotton tend to be more absorbent and durable. That article was written by Molly Court. This is from the Glasgow Times on the 22nd of November 2023 from the news section and the headline reads Glasgow East Women's Aid Board Accused of Union Busting Amid Strike This article is by Marissa McWhorter Workers from a women's aid charity will strike over the course of three months about bullying allegations, a mass suspension of staff and unfair dismissals. Unite confirmed today that members from Glasgow East Women's Aid, GWA, will strike on Mondays and Fridays, excluding holidays, between 8am and 5pm from December 1st to February 16th, 2024. The union announced last week that every member they represent at the Easter House charity voted to support strike action. Legal claims have also been submitted by the union amid allegations the board of GWA unfairly dismissed five workers during the ballot period for an industrial action. Because the five staff members worked at the organisation for less than two years, the board was not required to provide a reason for their dismissals. Unite claims the dismissals are unfair because they were specifically linked to workers' trade union activities and an apparent drive to undermine the union which supported members after they were suspended amid bully allegations. We previously reported that the board of the GEWA came under fire for sending home 13 workers with full pay after they reported claims of systemic bullying within the organisation. A spokesperson for the board of the GEWA said staff were sent home with full pay while an external human resources company carried out investigations into the claims. Linda Wilson, industrial officer at Unite, said... The events at Glasgow East Women's Aid have turned from bad to worse. She added, We believe our members have been targeted for attempting to raise legitimate concerns about the service and for exercising their rights by involving their union in this dispute. Sharon Graham, Unite General Secretary, said, Unite will not tolerate any of our members at Glasgow East Women's Aid being targeted and dismissed due to raising legitimate concerns about their workplace. These dismissals shockingly took place during an industrial action ballot and there is no doubt that this move was designed to undermine the ballot process. Unite has launched an unfair dismissal claims on behalf of our five members. Be in no doubt we will be holding the organisation's management to account for its disgraceful behaviour and potentially illegal attitude to its staff. The Glasgow Times made repeated attempts to contact the board of the GEWA for a response which went unanswered. In a statement to STV News last week, a spokesperson for the board claimed an employee who is a member of Unite raised a complaint with the union that has not yet been resolved. They also claimed all employees, including those going on strike, are the very individuals who have been the subject of those grievances which Unite referred to as being about bullying. Spokesperson added, Understandably, this is an extremely complex situation. Similarly, Unite and employees have claimed they are going on strike due to the board not investigating internal HR issues. Again, this is completely wrong. In actuality, the board instructed an external HR investigation in September that is still ongoing. The employees are now expressing that the investigation is not moving as fast as they would like despite it only having been around two months. This may seem like a while, however, it needs to be understood that it will take time to complete a comprehensive, independent HR investigation into over 15 individuals over a course of complaints that they have brought to the forefront, referring to alleged behaviour that is many years old. Strike action is not justified and ironically could delay the investigation. The board has made every possible effort to resolve issues and continue to support employees through external counselling, but employees are ignoring our attempts at resolution. We are now at a highly regrettable stage where we are trying to resolve matters with our employees, but they refuse to communicate with us directly. Therefore, 
we are at a loss as to how else we can resolve matters with these valuable workers. A spokesperson for Glasgow's Health and Social Care Partnership said, We continue to work with the GEWA and relevant partners in order to maintain a level of service for women and children seeking support. We will continue to monitor the service being delivered to ensure the safety and well-being of the women and children in receipt of service. This article was by Marissa McWhorter. This is from the Glasgow Times on the 22nd of November 2023 from the news section and the headline reads I am allergic to trees and a prisoner inside my Glasgow home. This article is by Kirsty Fiedek. A Glasgow mum who is allergic to trees feels like a prisoner in her own home. Mary Duncan suffers from allergies to trees and oak moss, which both leave her burning and tingling when she comes into contact with them. The 58-year-old also claims she can't get a job because her allergy makes her face swell so much she cannot leave the house. Now she is desperate to get rid of two large pine trees, which are believed to be around 70 years old, in her garden that she cannot afford to cut down. Mary told the Glasgow Times, I am a prisoner in my own home because of the trees. My face gets really red and swollen, which burns me. It is because the pine needles from the branches go everywhere. I refuse to leave the house when I have a flare-up, so I can't work. It has made my depression and anxiety a lot worse. It would cost around £1,400 to cut them down, which we don't have. I'm really worried about the future of my health. Mary claims she has begged her housing association for more than four years to step in as she believes her long-term health is at risk. However, the Wheatley Group told Glasgow Times they won't cut the trees, as it is the tenant's responsibility. They did confirm that Mary and her partner, Ian McLean, 54, are priority for a move instead and have cut the trees back in the meantime. Ian added, We have spent thousands of pounds decorating our home since moving in. We don't want to leave it. We just want the trees to be cut down so Mary's allergies aren't as bad. Something really needs to be done. Moving as an option we will consider, but nothing seems to be done to help us. Mary believes she developed her tree allergy almost five years ago, but has suffered a perfume allergy her whole life. Tree moss, also known as Sudivernia forfacea, is a lichenized species of fungus that grows on bark of firs and pines. The species has numerous human uses, including use in perfume, which could be triggering her negative reaction. A Wheatley Homes Glasgow spokesperson said, Care of the garden is the tenant's responsibility. We have supported the tenant by cutting back trees at the foot of the garden. We have also fitted new fencing and paving slabs. We will continue to keep in regular contact with the tenant and help in any way we can. This article was by Kirsty Fiedek. This is from the Glasgow Times on the 22nd of November 2023 from the news section and the headline reads Parents raise fears after carbon dioxide discovery at Glasgow School. This article is written by Amanda Keenan. Angry parents have hit out at education bosses after fears were flagged around the presence of a potentially dangerous gas in the classrooms of a Glasgow school. Concerns have been raised after carbon dioxide was found at Barnum and High in Bailiston. Those children at the secondary, which has a roll of over 1,200, are unhappy that classrooms are being ventilated by leaving windows open, measures which they say are unacceptable in the middle of winter. Dozens of parents have also taken to social media, claiming that their children have taken unwell in recent weeks, with symptoms including breathlessness, tiredness, sickness and nausea. Several have also posted image of what they claim are the carbon dioxide monitors in the classroom, showing unusually high readings. However, education chiefs have written to parents insisting that the school is safe and say measures are being put in place to monitor the levels of the gas closely. One worried mum told the Glasgow Times that her asthmatic daughter had been left to sit in a freezing classroom for three periods due to the window being left ajar. The 42-year-old said it affected her breathing, and she was left feeling sick and tired. Opening windows in the middle of winter, which is what seems to be the solution right now, 
is not an acceptable way forward. It is freezing outside some days and my daughter has asthma, so the cold causes her real problems. There are lots of parents saying their kids have been coming home unwell and we want answers. We want to know what's caused this within parts of the building and what is being done to properly remedy the situation. Leaving windows open only masks it, it doesn't get to the root of the problem. Carbon dioxide at low concentration has little, if any, toxicological effects on humans. At higher concentrations, however, it can cause the development of hypercapnia and respiratory acidosis. The most common symptoms of carbon dioxide poisoning are headaches, dizziness, weakness, chest pain and confusion. Another parent told the Glasgow Times that people are angry about how the problem at school has been addressed. He added, I found out what was going on because my son's teacher said to pupils who were complaining about the windows being kept open. It is ludicrous to think that staff have been told to deal with such a potential serious issue by leaving a few windows open if the levels of CO2 creep up. We want to know what is causing these unusual levels of carbon dioxide in the school and what is going to be done to fix this. A spokesperson for Glasgow City Council's Education Department says that the data has been collected daily to monitor the levels of the gas and make sure they don't pose a danger to staff or pupils. They also say that the correspondence was sent to parents on Friday to make them aware of the measures being put in place. It states, We appreciate there have been concerns raised about CO2 levels. There is, however, no need to be alarmed by CO2 levels within the school building. To give some context, CO2 monitors are in place in classrooms, so staff have been checking these. Monitors are checked so that staff can put mitigations in place. This was established practice during the pandemic. All schools have been provided with robust guidance from the Glasgow City Council Health and Safety Team regarding managing ventilation. The advice states that to improve ventilation and thermal comfort, windows and doors should be opened. This clean air will replace the stale indoor air from classrooms being populated by staff and young people. During a normal school day, levels will rise, however, with breaks and different capacity of young people in classrooms. There is timetable to time for new air to be circulated via ventilation methods. We also actively encourage staff and young people to take breaks throughout the school day outside, therefore also allowing for more ambient levels within the building. Unfortunately, at this time of year, we do routinely experience a rise in pupils and staff with colds and viruses. We will continue to take advice from Glasgow City Council Health and Safety Team and put in place all recommendations. A spokesperson for Glasgow City Council said, Families and staff have been reassured that there is no cause for concern over CO2 levels at the school. There has been no change to processes put in place during the pandemic to monitor and improve air quality. To help address rumours that have been circulating in the community, tests have been carried out this week that illustrate the school was doing a good job in balancing comfort conditions with air quality. This article was by Amanda Keane. This is from the Glasgow Times on the 22nd of November 2023 from the news section. And the headline reads, Section of Major Glasgow Road to Close for Work. This article is by Esther Tarnay. A section of a busy Glasgow road will be shut for work. The A739 offslip northbound will be shut from the A739 offslip northbound fork at Victoria Park Drive South to the Victoria Park Drive South loop. This is to allow for an inspection of a retaining wall on the A739 offslip. The closure will start at 10pm on Monday, November 27th and finish at 10pm on Tuesday, November 28th. Between these times, drivers are advised to be careful in the area. The diversion will be as follows. Westbound Victoria Park Drive South, turn right Westland Drive Northbound, follow onto Victoria Park Drive North Eastbound, turn right onto A739 Southbound, turn left onto A814 Westbound. This article was by Esther Tarnay. This is from the Glasgow Times on the 22nd of November 2023 from the news section and the headline reads Why there are armed police on Glasgow streets today? 
That's how it goes by Esther Tarney. Officers in Glasgow and North Lanarkshire will take part in a live play exercise today as part of training. Police Scotland has announced the event on social media and has confirmed that if residents see a large armed 999 presence, it's a standard procedure and not an emergency. It will take place in Pollock Shaws and the Gobbles, as well as in Airdrie and Cumbernauld. On X, formerly Twitter, the force said, Our officers are taking part in a live play exercise today in North Lanarkshire and Glasgow. You may see armed police as part of this. The training is standard procedure and not in response to a specific threat or intelligence. This article was by Esther Tarney. This is from the Glasgow Times on Wednesday the 22nd of November 2023 from the Lifestyle section. Choirs set to perform in Brayhead Shopping Centre next month. This article is written by Ben Waddle. The Quarriers Festival of Choirs is set to return to shopping centres across Glasgow next month. It comes after the choirs revealed they are set to perform at Brayhead Shopping Centre on Monday, December the 4th and Tuesday, December the 5th at various times throughout the day and special evening performances from 6pm until 8.15pm. They will also be performing at the St Enoch Centre on Wednesday, December the 6th and Sunday, December the 10th from 11pm until 12pm then 1.30pm and 3.45pm, and Prince's Square on Monday, December the 11th, and Saturday, December the 23rd, at various times. On top of that, there will also be a special one-off performance from Rockers Choir at Tesco in Linwood on Tuesday, December the 5th, from 7pm to 8pm. The events are being held to help raise cash for quarrier services in Scotland. This year, 19 schools are taking part, as well as 13 community choirs. Louise Strachan, Quarriers Events and Community Fundraiser, said, We are thrilled to have the Festival of Choirs back on our Christmas events calendar. All the choirs are looking forward to being involved, and we are grateful for all their support, and can't wait for everyone to hear them perform a range of festive favourites. That article was written by Ben Waddle. This is from the Glasgow Times, on Wednesday the 22nd of November 2023, from the Opinion section. Firefighters in warning that more cuts will cost lives. This article is written by John Daly. In a month when expenses incurred by elected members across Scotland have been hitting the headlines, it was most informative to meet representatives of the Fire Brigades Union last week at the City Chambers. This proved to be an extremely beneficial meeting for all elected members, cross-party, who took the trouble to attend. The representatives of Glasgow's firefighters gave it to us straight and said, We have been cut to shreds. These are the men and women who put their own lives and well-being on the line to save ours. Like the police and health service workers, there is an expectation among all of us that come the time we need them, they will be there for us. So, when they give you the grim message above, then we have to take notice. The firefighters have launched an awareness-raising campaign regarding the proposed removal of operational appliances and their crews. The Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, SFRS, like most services across Scotland, has been asked to make further savings, that's cuts to you and me, by the SNP Green Government. This is on top of £45 million of cuts already endured by this most vital of public services. Over the last 10 years, these cuts have resulted in the loss of firefighter jobs, the closure of call control rooms, and perhaps most worryingly, an increase in response time to incidents. Those who know how quickly a fire can take hold, particularly in what was previously referred to as Tinderbox City, can only be very worried by these facts. 
The firefighters' representatives said, the Scottish Parliament was told that the amalgamation of Scotland's regional fire services into one Scottish service in 2012 would not create cuts, but efficiencies. Since then, we have lost 1,200 firefighters, five 999 control rooms and response times to incidents are up by 14%. This was all prior to 10 appliances being removed across Scotland in September, including fire appliances in Govan, Maryhill and Cowcaddens, and the dedicated boat rescue team at Polmaddy, as part of the most recent cuts. The Chief Officer of SFRS recently told the Justice Committee the draft Scottish budget, due to be announced in December, would require another 18 appliances and over 300 firefighter posts to be cut, in order to hit that budget. Our members know that these cuts will cost lives. The FBU in Scotland calls upon the Scottish Government to properly fund our vital emergency service, reverse the cuts and give people of Glasgow and the rest of the country the fire service they deserve. Stark words from an already embattled FSRS which is already massively underfunded. Let's be clear, this is not a pay claim or a dispute about overtime or terms and conditions. This is about the ability for the fire service to operate properly. Only fools ignore the advice of those at the front line when they signal danger ahead, particularly when it is done from a public safety standpoint. I do not blame the SFRS for having to look for ways to find cuts imposed on them by their political masters in Edinburgh. Politics is about making choices, often very difficult ones. But as we were reminded by our brave firefighters last Thursday, they should not be put in a position of choosing between their personal safety and that of the public. Every last one of us depends on the brave men and women who put their lives on the line to protect ours, so we should make sure, at the very least, that they are properly funded and equipped to do that job properly. No brainer. That article was written by John Daly. This is from the Glasgow Times, on Wednesday the 22nd of November 2023, from the Lifestyle section. Former Glasgow pub sold to be turned into flats. This article is written by Brian Donnelly. A former pub earmarked for flats for disabled people has been sold. The vital spark in Govan Road in Glasgow is set to be turned into flats for disabled people. The sale was handled by Cornerstone Business Agents and while the value of the transaction was not disclosed, it had been on the market at a guide price of £215,000. Lindhouse Housing Association was recently granted permission by Glasgow City Council to convert the Vital Spark, which was previously Fairfield Bar. Two two-bedroom flats are planned, with one accessed from Govan Road and the other from Clacken Drive. They will both have access to the communal backcourt at 1147 Govan Road, which is also owned by the Housing Association. Council planners said earlier that generally this arrangement would not be acceptable given the risk of the division of ownership from the proposed units and the back court. Cornerstone said Govan Road provides a mix of retail and commercial businesses serving this highly populated area of the city. The subjects form the ground floor of a Victorian style four storey tenement property. Internally, the property comprises main bar, kitchen preparation area, WCs and basement cellar. The schedule continued. The availability of the subject offers a variety of potential uses. Subject to change of use, the property would also be suitable for retail or residential use. The subjects are also being sold on a rarely available freehold basis making this an ideal opportunity for landlord and investor purchasers. 
That article was written by Brian Donnelly. That concludes this week's edition of the Glasgow Times podcast. Please remember to subscribe to our channels at Tune Review and to tell your friends about our service.